welcome to Everything's Fine in Just Under Nine, a parenting series. Today we are talking tantrums. Okay, why do toddlers tantrum? Mm, everything? Mm, yeah. Okay, no, four reasons I hear over and over why my family's kiddos are having tantrums. One, I told them no, said they couldn't have something, took something away. Two, they were really frustrated because that toy was not doing what they wanted it to do. Three, we tried to come in from outside. We had to leave the park. We were all done at the zoo. Transitions, those are hard. Four, they don't have the language to tell me what they want, what they need throughout the day. These are all valid reasons why kiddos have tantrums. They are all developmentally appropriate. So now let's talk about what is a typical tantrum and what is a tantrum that your kiddo might need some extra support? So when we think of tantrums, we want to think of time, frequency, and how they're able to respond. A typical tantrum can happen at least once every day. It can last up to 15 minutes. In a typical tantrum, normally a kiddo is able to be easily distracted and is able to regulate their body under that 15 minute mark. These are happening all day long, four or five times a day. They are lasting for longer than 15 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. Distraction does not work for these tantrums. Kiddos are often aggressive. They might be doing self-harm, hitting, biting, banging their head. If this sounds familiar, I encourage you to contact your pediatrician or your local early intervention service agency. But in the meantime, here are some strategies that you can try. I want to talk about tantrums in a time frame because there is a build up and there is a come down with tantrums. Different strategies work better during different times of the tantrum and other strategies can truly backfire if used at the wrong time. Okay, so let's go back to that why. These could be considered the triggers even though I don't like using the word triggers because a lot of parents have no idea what triggers their toddler, nor will they probably ever know. I have no idea. So. Getting upset when told no. The best strategy I know that has been proven to be effective is offering choices all day long. All day long. What color socks do you want to wear? Do you want to put your pants or your shirt on first? Would you like a fork or a spoon for breakfast? What do you want to eat for breakfast? Pancakes or cereal? Do you want that in a bowl or a plate? All of these choices fills their little cup of independence so that they are feeling empowered from the get-go of the day. That way, when they are told no or that they can't do something or have something, it's not that big of a hit because they've been able to make all these choices throughout their day. However, I also challenge you to not say the word no, to not tell them they can't do something. Instead, challenge, they're climbing on the couch, they're gonna break their neck, they're driving you nuts. Instead of saying, stop that, get off that, you could maybe try, it looks like you need to climb. Should we put the cushions on the floor or would you like to go on the slide? Another example, I want candy. I do too. After we eat our dinner, we can have candy. Would you like an apple or a banana? They're not hearing the word no. They get to hear that that candy's coming. They get two choices of what they can have right now. Hopefully we don't have a tantrum. That second reason why, transitions. My biggest go-to is a timer. A timer can save your life, I promise, but it takes a lot of work. They're very confused by a timer at first and it takes a good two weeks to get this thing going, but can be very effective. Okay, that third reason why, frustration. Frustration over a toy that isn't working. Frustration because they can't communicate. They don't feel well. They're hungry. They're tired. This is where we need to come in. We need to check our basic boxes. Are they hungry? Are they tired? Are they not feeling well? You know they're going to get mad at this block because it never stacks the way they want it to. Be prepared. Offer that language. 
All right, do you need help? Can I play? Back to those choices. Do you want water or juice? And finally, always trying to label that feeling. Looks like you're getting frustrated, can I help? Which brings us into the second phase of a tantrum. They're getting escalated. We've kind of passed the point of no return, the whining, the body movements are happening. Here we go. First things first, check yourself. If you're irrational, they have no choice but to be irrational with you. Number two, hey, guess what? Offer a choice. Your tower isn't working. Do you want this block or do you want a book? If it's related to being told no, let's label that feeling. I know you're mad. You can have this or this. Validate, it's okay for them to feel mad. It's okay for them to be frustrated, but you're not budging or moving your boundaries that they cannot climb on the couch. They could climb on a cushion or go to the slide. Those are giving them choices of things that they can do that are safe for them. All right, damn, Gina, they gone. They're gone. It is time for you to step back. This part of the tantrum can often look like a WWE wrestling match with either themselves or you. Not funny, I know. This is where I encourage you to step back. Provide a safe place if they are hurting themselves. Put them in a common quarter, put them in their bed, somewhere soft that they can get through these emotions. Less is more. Less is more, less is more. We don't wanna talk, we don't wanna to touch, we don't wanna do much of anything, but maybe just sit there. If you can, if you can handle it to sit there and be there when they're ready, fantastic. If you're about to lose it, please remove yourself too. That is okay. You need to calm yourself down before you can help them. That is okay. One thing I wanna say about self-harm is it is often a lot harder for us to watch than it is for them to actually go through. A lot of times a kiddo is not really hurting themselves. It is just a reaction to them not being able to regulate their body. They cannot communicate because all of these areas of the brain shut down in this heightened phase. I mean, I sound like I'm speaking another language when I'm upset. It happens to all of us. My lips are getting swollen. I can't breathe. It's just not worth it. I'll talk to you later. All right, I think we made it. We're coming down. Quieter voices, body movements are a little less, slower breathing. Your best strategy during this time is to just wait. And again, be there if you can next to them for when they're ready. You might offer a hug depending on how your child reacts to that touch and to that talk. Otherwise, this is the time if you're cool enough to enter the room and just wait and be there for them. I think that's great. And just like that, we have a full battery back to wrecking your world. Now here's where you gotta decide. Do I talk about it? Do I drag it out? Is it important to me whatever we just went through? If it is, then yeah, maybe have a little conversation. It made me really upset when you did this. Your choices are doing this. I was keeping your body safe by doing this. If not, move on, get through it. What can I say? Toddlers are different. Tantrums are hard. Tantrums are a healthy part of development, but please also seek help if they are those atypical tantrums lasting longer than 15 minutes or happening all day long. No one should go through that alone. Don't forget to subscribe for more Everything's Fine in Under 9 parenting video. And don't forget to check out my play series where you and your little one can play along with me to help boost speech and language development. Bye, friends.